Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we are going to study about the branch difficulties. That is a continued topic of the previous uh, my previous video. That is pipelining conflicts, right? So we are having basically three pipelining conflicts. We revise the things, right? That is resource conflict, data dependency, and branch difficulties, right? So uh, in a resource conflict, we can resolve it by uh, memory interleaving part, right? That concept of memory interleaving, we can solve that, right? The second data dependency we discussed in a previous video. To solve this data dependency, we are having three options. One that is hardware interlock, that is one kind of circuit, right? Uh, that uh, detect the detect the uh, source and destination instruction, right? Where operands are needed, dependent operands are needed, right? And then it will uh, insert the required delays, right? Then second option we are having that is operand forwarding, right? In operand forwarding, again, there is a special hardware, right? That creates a special path between the pipelining segments. So the data will uh, omit the register, right? And it will directly go from segment to segment, right? And the third option we are having that is delayed load, right? In which we add the no operation part, right? So uh, now today in this lecture, we are going to study the third uh, uh, data conflict that is branch difficulties right now this branch difficulties are happen uh, there is a major issue whenever any branch instruction occurs right so there is uh, basically two type of branch instruction one that can be a conditional branch right and the second that is unconditional branch right now, an unconditional branch always alters the sequence program flow by loading the program counter with the target address. And in a conditional branch, the control select the target instruction if the condition is satisfied. And uh, if it is not satisfied, then the next sequence, uh, next uh, whatever sequence we are having in instruction that is uh, executed, right? So ultimately a branch instruction breaks the normal sequence right of the instruction stream and it will causing the difficulty in the operation of instruction pipelining because we are going segment wise right so it will uh, create a problem there right. So what will be the solution for that uh, to handle the branch difficulties right. So first solution we are having that is prefetch the target instruction right. So in prefetch the target instruction uh, it will uh, in advance it will fetch the target instruction right in addition to the instruction following the branch right so we are having the after the branch instruction whatever instruction I'm having that instruction and an add of that target instruction we fetch both of the instruction right it continue the fetching instruction from both places until the branch decision is made right whether uh, if we are having a conditional branch so it might be possible if condition is satisfied then uh, that branch is done right and if condition is not satisfied then the whatever following instructions are there that would going to be execute right so what it will do it will fetch both the instruction from the both places right and along with that whenever the decision is made then it will uh, whenever the decision is made then it will choose whether to go with the branch or uh, to continue with the next instruction the second option we are having that is a branch target buffer right now branch target buffer that is also known as a btb right now btb is an associative memory as you know that associative memory right in a memory organization chapter we already discussed this associative memory right so we are going to use this associative memory as a btb that is as a buffer right branch target buffer so it will be included in the fetch segment of pipelining right now what it will do that each entry in btb consists of the address of a previously executed branch instruction right so previously whatever uh, branch instruction are already executed it will store each and every entry in btb right and the target instruction for the branch right so if there is a branch and whatever the target will be that both are stored in the btb right and it also store the next few instruction right so what it will do that when the pipeline decodes any of the branch instruction it's first of all search its associative memory 
it searched for the btb right for the address of the instruction if it is available right if that if there is a way it is available in btb buffer so the instruction is directly executed from that prefetch right and continue with the new path right if the instruction is available then it will directly fetch from that right but if the instruction is not available in the btb then what it will do so here there is a difference then the pipelining shifts to a new instruction stream and stores the target instruction right so if it is already available it will go with that path only right there is no need to again fetch the address and all the things right so that, uh, this is the benefit right so if it is available in btb it will be directly fetched from that right and if it is not available then it will go for the new instruction stream and then it will go for the uh, whatever target right and it will again store that target in btb so for in a future it will be useful right then the another option we are having that is a loop buffer now loop buffer is just a variant of a branch target buffer right uh, branch target buffer is used for any kind of branch and loop buffer is especially target to the loop program right whenever we are having loop in a program right so this is a small very high speed register file right loop buffer is a small very high speed register file maintained by the instruction fetch segment again it is maintained by the fetch segment the btb is also uh, stored by the fetch segment only right the associative memory we are having that is also with the fetch segment only and here we are having loop buffer that is also with the fetch segment only right so when a program uh, in a program any loop is detected right so it is stored in the loop buffer right including all the branches right so whenever any loop is detected all the loop are uh, stored in the loop buffer along with its all all branches right then whenever the program loop is there it can be executed directly without having to access the memory right so again and again if we need to use because we are having loop right so we are for a certain period of time we need to run that loop only right so without going to the memory right it will directly access it right and until what the until the loop made uh, mode is removed by the final branching out right whenever the final bun is performed then and only then the control is given to some another uh, instruction right otherwise until that this will confirm from the it will take the data from the loop buffer only right so there is no another need right then the other uh, option we are having that is branch prediction right now what it will do so it uses some additional logic to guess the output of a conditional branch it's totally blind right so it will directly guess the branch uh, as you can see it's a prediction right so we are not 100% sure that it will will gonna get the correct answer each and every time right so uh it will guess the outcome of a conditional branch right before it is executed right then the pipeline begins prefetching the instruction stream for a predicted path right it will prefetch the instruction right and if a prediction is correct right so it eliminates the wasted time right otherwise it will again go for the normal scenario what we traditionally do conventionally do it will follow the same right but it is not 100% useful because it's based on prediction we cannot predict the entire behavior of my program right then the last but most important solution that is delayed branch right now delayed branch previously we have already seen delayed load right with the no operation addition right in that we have studied that compiler uh, is made to do each and everything right here also in a delayed branch also it is a work of compiler only right so compiler detect the branch instruction whenever there is a branch it will be detected by the compiler and it will rearrange the machine language code sequence that means uh, our entire program machine language code sequence means about our entire program right so it will rearrange the program by inserting useful instruction 
right that keep the pipelining operating without interruption right because in a delayed load we add the no operation so it, it is a waste of time only right we are wasting the timing cycles right so it will rearrange the instructions so that what we can have that my uh, each and every segments are working and each and every cycle so there is no waste of timing cycle right so here one example we are having right so this example first i am having load from memory to r1 so i am loading the data from r1 right second instruction i am having increment r2 right third instruction i am having add r3 to r4 right then uh, fourth instruction i am having subtract r5 from r6 right and at the sixth uh, sorry fifth instruction i am having branch to address x right so here i am having this first second third fourth and fifth instruction right so my fifth instruction is branching instruction till that is it is a normal instruction that is addition and increment and load right now if you see the time space diagram of this in, uh, entire thing right so first i am doing this using no operation right that is uh, previously we have already discussed right so first uh, in our first cycle here i am having again uh, fetch the instruction alu operation and execute the instruction right so first that is load uh, from memory to r1 right that would be uh, that instruction is fetched in first cycle right in the second cycle that instruction will be in the second segment that is alu right my first segment that is fetch instruction right that is denoted by i right segment 2 that is uh, alu operation right denoted by a and third segment that is execution right denoted by e right so here my uh in my second cycle my first instruction will be in a segment two that is alu operation and second instruction in the fetch part right so this is normally what we have done till now right now here what it will do that now uh, we are having this branch instruction right so it need to go for the jump right so if we don't have this no operation right suppose assume that instead of this here i am having that is instruction in x right assume this right now assume this this is instruction in x right so in the my fifth timing cycle this branch instruction branch to x this instruction is fetched right then it will go to the alu segment in my sixth cycle right and in the seventh cycle it will be executed that means in the seventh cycle only i'll get to know whether there is a branch if there is a conditional branch then whether there is a branch or not right so i'll come to know whether there is a branch or not that is in the seventh cycle at the end of the seventh cycle only i'm having the seventh cycle so at the end of seventh cycle only i'll get to know right so it can be performed after the seventh cycle only right that means that instruction in x that can be fetch in the eighth cycle only right so if i have this instruction in x over here so it cannot be fetch at the sixth cycle because it will be available after the seventh cycle only after the seventh cycle only it will be available that at which location i need to jump right so for that this is not possible so we are adding this to no operation so this is a blank right this is a waste of time right we are wasting the time over here right so we are adding the no operation over here and uh, when in at the end of the seventh cycle when it will be available so from the eighth cycle itself from the eighth cycle itself we are fetching the next instruction that is available in x that is after my jump right so that we are fetching this instruction then in the ninth cycle I, it will be in my alu and in the 10th cycle it will be in the execution mode right so here this is also possible this is one solution we are having but here we are having no operation right so it is wasting the time because my eighth instruction that is instruction in x will be gone into the 10th cycle i need 10 cycle to reach up to x right my execution of the whatever instruction i'm having at x position that would be executed at the 10th cycle only right so the another uh, 
solution we are having that is rearranging the instruction right so how we are rearranging the instruction so first as you can see previously we have already seen that we are having the instruction that first instruction is load second is increment third is add fourth is subtract and fifth is x right now fifth instruction is not at all dependent of any of the previous instruction if you say one two three and four none of the instructions are dependent or uh, fifth instruction is dependent on, on none of the instruction right so i can shift this instruction to any of the position I can shift this fifth instruction to the first one, I can shift it to the second one, I can shift it to the third one, I can shift it to the fourth one, right? I can shift anywhere because it is not at all dependent on the uh, previous one, right? So here what we are doing, we are shifting the instruction to the third location. Previously, this was my fifth instruction, right? This was my first instruction, this was second instruction, this was third this was fourth, this was my fifth instruction, this is my sixth instruction, right? But what I am doing, I am shifting this to from fifth to the third instruction, right? So now what, are, uh, what will be done now here, if you can see that uh, in the second instruction, uh, in the second clock cycle, my second instruction is in the fetch mode, right? In the third clock cycle, my third instruction will be in the fetch mode. Right, getting this here, I'm having my third instruction that is branch to X. Previously, it was fifth instruction, right? So, I'm uh, rearranging it at the third position. So, in the third uh, cycle itself, it will be fetched, right? In the fourth cycle, it will be an arithmetic operation, ALU, right? And in the fifth cycle, this will be executed, right? That means in the end, at the end of the fifth cycle, I'll get to know whether there is a branch or not. And if there is a branch, then at the which position that branch is there, right? So at the end of fifth cycle, I'm ready with my X, right? And jump, right? Whether I need to jump or not, right? And then at the fourth cycle, when this instruction will be in the second segment, that is ALU operation, my fourth addition will be in my uh, fetch phase, right? I phase segment one, right? And in the fifth cycle, it will be in an ALU phase, right? And my fifth cycle will be in an instruction phase, right? In the sixth cycle, this is important. If you go for the sixth cycle, my fourth instruction will be executed, right? My fifth cycle will be in the ALU form, right? And now here I need to fetch the instruction. So instruction in X, whatever instruction I am having that, that will be fetched in the sixth cycle. And this is possible. Why? Because the data is already available at the end of the fifth cycle, right? So now if I jump for this, it is possible, right? So this is known as rearranging the instruction. And it is not compulsory that you can rearrange it to the third position also. You can rearrange to the, you can shift it to the second portion also, second instruction also, you can shift to the first instruction also. Just you need to keep in mind that that instruction should not depend on the prior instruction. If that are dependent on the previous instruction, then you need to key, uh, wait for that particular instruction to be executed and then you can rearrange the things, right? So this is one of the solution of branching dependency, right? So in this video lecture, what we have seen that branching difficulties, right? And in this... Uh, some solutions we are having that is branch target buffer right that uses uh, associated memory then we are having branch prediction right that is not 100% sure because we are predicting the thing then prefetch the target instruction in advance only we prefetch the target instruction right and both the instruction are fetched right if uh, uh, if there is a branch, then it will go for that instruction. And if there is no branch, then it will continue with the uh, next whatever instruction we are having that. Then for the specially loop, we are having a loop buffer that is again a variant of uh, your BTB only, right? So we have seen all the instructions, right? 
uh, all the solutions of that and this one is the best solution we are having this is known as delayed branch right delayed branch can be performed with the no operation as well and by rearranging the things also right so uh, the better solution is rearranging the instructions right so i hope you all understand this right so uh, these are the conflicts we are having pipeline in a pipelining and how to resolve it we have started in this i hope you all understand this right thank you